Saturday morning. Nothing like coming into the shop and work has been done. I wasn't even here. So who kicked who in the ass last night to get all this work done? I have to fire my head ass. <laughs> Look at him, he's dressed like he's Canadian over there. Hit it. A little more. A little more. A little more. Right there. Come on. Ah! That hurt. Ow! Did you find all the parts? Because you're in such a damn hurry. <laughs> Look at this fancy guy. He's doing work here. Right. Changing out some clutches. I would've got all the how-to, but Ricky was busy schooling him and he got a little aggravated. Yeah, Ricky's a middle nine. Family friendly. Who's worse, them or Ricky? <laughs> Man, Ricky. <laughs> well, Jerry's messing around with that. I got my Stifler shirt and hat on today because I want to get this transmission mount sorted out that's laying down on the ground here. We thought we didn't have brackets A, B, or whatever the hell they're called. Very important to read your instructions, but then we found them. So, TM M05 driver and TM M05 passenger. So, name of the game is to uh, install these guys. And the driver's side does differ from the passenger side. Upon inspection here, they are not stamped. How do you know which one's which? Anyways, I'll read the instructions, come back, drill some holes, get this bolted on. of teamwork. All right, new day, new attitude. It's still a little <laughs> negative after all of our rigmarole. So the diff cover was on two times when it shouldn't have been on. Number one, it was just like we were in a groove and Ricky's like, oh, get the diff cover ready. So we put it on. I think he assumed that Jerry was running C-clip eliminators, which he wasn't. So we pulled it off. Slid the axles in with, did we forget the brackets? No, we put no. the brackets on, but forgot that Jerry got extended lug nuts and there was no way to run the lug nuts into the backside of the rotor with the plates on. So that was the second time. Third time, the caliper brackets were wrong. They just didn't work with the Cobra brake setup that he's running, so he to went... Be, to be more specific, it was an SN95 kit. I didn't read that when I, when I purchased it three years ago or something like that. So 
Since it does not work with Fox Wise. Does not work with Fox Wise. Probably in fine print. Um, I have to say that everything else that Jerry's bought so far has been bolt on and has been pretty stress and trouble free. Just for whatever reason, this is one of those things that's just fighting us to the death. So he stole the North race car brackets off his other car, ordered up some UPR billet some ones. Billet ones. They're, yeah. up, they're currently on sale. Uh, I think normally they're 150s are on sale for $99. Free shipping? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Nice. If, I, if not, it was like 20 bucks for both, but I for two. Right. So there we go. Hopefully these brackets are gonna work. We've sort of mocked up that side and the rotor is really close to the bracket, but until both axles are in, the C-clips are installed, we're really not gonna get a full accurate representation of where everything's gonna sit. So we're gonna go ahead now, get this all bolted up. Hopefully it'll be fine. If it is, the diff cover can go on for the last and final time. Yay! Oh, don't forget, are you gonna, you're not gonna run these anti-mones now. Ha <laughs> ha! I wanted to put them on, but I have them now. They'll go with the. I'll sell them with the uh, the rest of the kit. Oh. All right, guys, diff cover can finally go back on. Drew in all the studs, used, uh, just kind of got creative with a spacer and a socket and some WD-40, drew them all in, uh, no problems there. Uh, cleaned up all the old right stuff off the diff and the diff cover. So gonna go ahead and get it on for hopefully the last and final time. It's unbelievable sometimes the things that you can do. Uh, makes you feel like a rookie sometimes. But anyways, we'll put a small bead along here. We're not gonna get too crazy. A lot of people, they put so much goop on here that it ends up bleeding up into the diff and dripping down out the sides. So you guys, you don't need to get that extreme with this. So I'm gonna put a small bead around it. We'll put all our hardware in. There's a torque sequence, pretty much, you know, kitty corner, up, down, left, right, across, across, so on and so forth, then we'll let that set up after we let it do its thing for about five minutes by hand and then we'll go down and do a final torque on it. All right, better progress today. You feel better now? I feel a little bit better personally. Yeah. And we can't smell gear oil anymore. Yeah, so gear oil will dissipate throughout the shop overnight. Covers back on, torque down, filled with diff fluid and friction modifier. So that's all taken care of. You want to mention that uh, this is not a restoration, it's just a daily driver? Yeah, th this is a driver project, guys. So it's not like we're trying to paint up every nut and bolt and everything. Uh, he did do an excellent job on the calipers, POR15 in blue. I didn't even know POR15 came in colors. Oh, nice. So that's a nice trick, because this is really thick. I've banged this around a little bit, as I'm sure Jerry has, and um, it's, it's thick. So we have the clearance that we need. We're not rubbing, which is good. And we need pads, emergency brake cables, and we need brake lines. We're gonna have to cut and flare the factory lines here. So we'll get that sorted out, torque down the control arms, get the shocks mounted, get the gas tank in. That'll pretty much take care of the back. Do you have a new fuel filter? I'm gonna get one. I've actually got the case for one of them. I just probably need to replace the... Yeah, so keep that in mind. We got clips, we got line. So got pretty much everything that we need. And that'll pretty much tidy up the back with the exception of running. So we got to run your power wire probably with the fuel line because that'll all go down this side. And then all my radio signal stuff go down the other one. Yeah, so one thing with the Coyote swap or actually any swap, to me personally, 
Typically guys will run the power wire down the driver's side, put the battery box over here, um, and then run everything down. Some guys will put the battery box on the passenger side for weight distribution, but still run the power wire down this side because the factory starter solenoid and everything's over there. Well, we're gonna do it a little bit different because the control pack and everything else is actually gonna live on the passenger side of the car. So we're gonna run the four or two gauge I think you actually have two gauge. I have to double check. It's pretty zero thick. Up the power. We have zero. I think so. Oh, big daddy. So the starter is actually going to end up being our main distribution point. So we're going to run that thick cable to the starter. And then off the starter, we can actually go to power our distribution block, alternator, and then to the accessories and the factory stuff up there near the driver's side fender. So we'll get into that in the next video. Don't need to listen to me ramble on about it right now. And yeah, we will get this buttoned up back down on the ground because we need to get this guy up in the air and go from there. Saturday morning, nothing like coming into the shop and work has been done. I wasn't even here. So who kicked who in the ass last night to get all this work done? I have no fire under his ass. <laughs> Look at him, he's dressed like he's Canadian over there. It's fucking cold outside. <laughs> so I had to cook dinner last night. I was in charge at uh, on the home front. So I left these two in charge and some work actually got done. Uh, this is one of those points where you reach in a project where things are fighting you, you start to get aggravated, start to get aggravated, frustrated, but Good news is, got the shocks in, got subframes welded up. So those stifflers are there in place. And now we got to do something that kind of sucks. So we were hoping, fingers crossed, the 10R80 would fit in there, no problems. And well, it doesn't. So we were trying to get the transmission jacked up enough to get that Stifler's cross member on, if you guys remember, and there was no way to get that cross member up high enough to seat right up in here. So what was happening is the transmission was too high on the transmission tunnel. Where's my light? Can you see that bracket that's pretty much rubbing? There and there. So we're gonna do some shaving, but in order to do some shaving, we gotta let this motor down a little bit. Put the right side socket. Yeah, because as soon as we lift the, the car up, it's, gonna wanna it's liable to go that way or that way a little bit. Right What's had, that? I just had the right one in my hand. I switched it out. Yeah. I think it's 18 millimeter. I could be wrong with that, 18 or 19. So you can see we got the jack posts creatively right through these tubular a arms, which is actually a nice thing because if we were running factory ones, we wouldn't be able to do such a thing. So jack post straight through holding up the K member here. We got jack posts in the back and the backside transmission mount. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to lift the car up off of the motor and transmission just enough so we can get access to the transmission, grind off the pieces that we need to grind, and hopefully we're going to let the car back down and everything should be good so fingers crossed our uh little plan here is going to work so jerry saw a video that was released what three weeks ago you said and same thing guys putting a 10r80 in it looks like he shaved a little bit more off than what we need to shave off maybe he was just being extra cautious but he ended up dropping the whole shebang down so hopefully work smarter not harder you can find the link we'll yeah, we can link to it, then you guys can see what he did, but we'll get this all loosened up and uh, fingers crossed it'll work. Ricky's got no long bolts in his hand. I need the long bolts so I can hand you something. Okay, so the plan is to get a super long bolt that once one of these is out on both sides, we'll run the super long bolt up. And that way what's going to happen is the frame we'll kind of ride with the K member and keep things lined up, even though we're pulling things up. If you guys don't understand what I mean, well, we'll show you.
Hoist arms all underneath the frame, jack posts on the K-member, jack posts on the transmission mount in the back. And then we've put these safety bolts through the frame rail, just one on each side to keep things relatively aligned. Yeah, relatively aligned. So we should be able to go about that high with the car. Ready? Hit it. A little more, a little more, a little more. Right there. Look at that. Quite a bit more room there, buddy. Will we be able to get, well, we can always. Lower that down a little bit. But I don't know if we're still gonna be able to, oh, maybe. Cause this one, I swear we don't need to touch. He, he ground that front one off. Mm. I feel like our problems are right here. Just taking a bit of that ear off and then this one. This one's definitely a problem. It's kind of just, just tilting the motor in there. Yeah, it's just tilting the front. Tap it out of there. Give it a little tap. A little tap, tap, tap. tap, tap. I can almost grab it with some pliers from this side. that hurt? Ah, oh, it's going to be a blood bluster in there. Look at this coming. Go get your freaking fingernails done. Get, ah. a, get a manicure. Oh, that hurt. What happened? Nothing. I slept. He needs a manicure. Ah. Ah. <laughs> oh, I just got rid of a blood bluster under my neck. <laughs> hey, Chris, you want to what? What? I didn't build a fucking thing. <laughs> I didn't say I wanted to talk about it. Okay. Let me see the flathead. <clears throat> Don't be breaking my flathead now. Grab it. There you go. Motor sort of dropped down out of the car. Now we can get cut off wheel here, a little bit here. He did up in here and oh, I don't know, maybe we'll just take that off on this side, maybe a little bit off this. I don't think we need to do that, but we can if we want. Might as well just make things easier to work with. So as you can see, we ground this off. I don't think this one needed to come off but we definitely took some off this tab and some right here. So we're getting really close in the tunnel. We also took out the quarter inch spacers that were in the motor mounts here. We don't think they're necessary and we had the clearance. So hopefully that'll be okay. So while we're up there, I'm gonna grab the transmission harness and we'll run that along the top of the transmission and just make our lives easier. And then that'll be done and out of the way. Why is that in the way? Oh, I thought we tightened that. No, we didn't. Shit. Uh, that. And this. And this. 
All right, there we try and bang this in the position and see if it stays in the template when we drill and we pull and we fucking have a beer. <laughs> we don't have any beer. We don't? No. You drank it all? Okay, so I turn that up to how it's going to need to go. So pitch it down, all right? Pitch, no, you pitch it down just like that, yeah. all right? And actually straighten it out and we'll, we'll turn it clockwise into shape or vice versa. It'll be easier that way. Yeah. All right, here, I'm in now. Sort of. Mm -hmm. You want this? Yeah. My angle. Oh. Okay. Shoot, we almost need to do it. Look at that. Like a glove. So. Now we're going to mark it and get it out. <laughs> I. Shit, I thought we flipped these bushings around the way we wanted them. Because don't we want this up here more? Didn't we say we wanted to get it closer to the front? So we gotta swap these bushings around. So that way we can get this mount closer up here, I feel. How do you get the mount any closer? You can't. Yeah, so we're gonna put, instead of these two black bushings here, yeah. we'll do it here so the camera can see. So instead of here, we're gonna put them on the back. So that, that way this bar is up here. Oh, okay. I thought you were this pushing I mean. the bracket forward. Yeah. So. Oh, fuck. Now it's in here. It's in here. What's in here? It's in here forever. No, it's not. Pressure fit. You don't even need to pull <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that earlier. That could be a... Uh, oh, it's, I'm fighting the... You think so? Yeah, it's already... Well, the, we got to, we got to the there. We'll have more uh, leverage. There. Oh. Ow! Could you find such all the parts? Because you're in such a damn hurry. <laughs>
transmission doesn't even want to come down anymore. It'll suck it down. I was going to have to, or I'm going to have to have a clearance to drive shaft well. <laughs> Yeah, we even lowered it on the front too. Yeah, I don't think this should. Well, we can loosen these. <laughs> it's up there. Oh shit. So that's going to do it for this episode. Honestly, I just kept going with the filming right into the fuel system and running the braided nylon line and everything else. So I didn't really have a stopping point filmed for this episode. So it's sort of after the fact, hopefully. This is going to help you guys for anyone out there that's doing a 10R80 or maybe it's just purely informative for you guys and wanting to know how that Stifler's transmission cross member goes in and the fact that you do need to do that little bit of clearancing. It's a very, very tight fit, but it is in there and we got everything bolted up. We got the subframes installed, so everything is going to be nice and stiff. So I can't say enough about the Stifler subframe connectors. You know just how they kind of bolt up to you know the crossers in your seat and from there it makes it really easy the contour and everything else in terms of being able to weld those guys in is really smooth and the transmission cross member everything fit really nicely obviously you know there's a little bit of pressure sometimes you got to get a hammer on there and kind of knock stuff into place because well you want a nice tight fit when it comes to things like your transmission cross member. So hopefully this video helped you guys out or you know you just enjoyed coming along for the ride. You can kind of get a sneak peek here. Jerry actually swapped out his wheels to something else and they actually look pretty good on there. So he's happy with that. I'm happy with his selection and we will button up the fuel lines in the next video. And from there, we'll be moving on to the control pack and getting ourselves into a position where we can most likely fire this thing up. But we do need to do those transmission cooler lines. He's got an oil cooler setup that we need to do as well. So a couple nice little mods still to have on that. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Twin turbo car, make sure to stay tuned for this. Um, the AC was a battle, but um, it's coming along. So I have a whole video on how I managed to squeeze a condenser in here with that massive intercooler and without having to cut the whole bottom side of the bumper cover out because I know a lot of guys end up doing that. So be sure to stay tuned for that. There's always lots more coming on the channel. Thank you again for your support. If you haven't hit those memberships for the exclusive members only lives, be sure to check those out. And we'll see you here next time on the Infamous Project.